Hi guys, um, I'm Joe, this is Barry, and uh, today this is our new show that we've literally just started up, it's called um, The Heart and Sound uh, Music Reviews, uh, and today we're going to be talking about um, Eminem's first uh, big album, which is the Slim Shady LP. Um, it's personally one of my favourite albums. Uh, Maybe not so much one of mine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, um, we're we're basically gonna break down like our favorite songs. Like, obviously, you might know um, one of the main songs that came out on this album was uh, "My Name Is," and that was quite a big hit for Eminem. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also a lot of other songs that I've also listened to on the album, which I really like as well. Um, and I've got a list of them here. Uh, I've got a whole list of the songs. should have really put this up before I started. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so um, obviously we've got uh, My Name Is. We've also got, like, bigger songs like um, Guilty Con- Conscience mm-hmm. and um, and Brain Damage as well. Uh, personal, r- I-, I love, like, mostly all of these songs because you've also got Role Model as well. Uh, and um, there's there's the whole album, like, preferably it's just, like, the, the best Eminem album i've ever listened to and i've listened to some of these newer stuff as well i like some of these newer stuff but i think this is like for me personally this is like my favorite album of all time um i think one of the, like a kind of an underrated song on the album is um 97 bonnie and clyde which is um which is a, a really good song uh, uh and um i also thought uh, i really like role model as well uh, though I'd probably say if I had to pick two of my favourite songs out of the whole album, uh, I'd definitely pick like those two. I couldn't actually pick between one or the other because they're, like, they're such good songs. Why not Bitches? Bitches? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's also a really good song as well. I, I, as I said earlier, I, I like the whole album. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we're going to talk about when you first listened to the album. So how yeah, about you tell so me a little bit about that? So yeah, so you said obviously the the one that stood up was obviously my name is obviously mm-hmm. that was kind of when I was DJing in the kind of hip hop clubs and stuff. It was an iconic kind of tune along with also like Fifty and all that as well. But mm-hmm. um, it was a definitely an album that sparked a lot of um, profanity, and uh, certainly it would um, outrage. I would say the. Mm-hmm the female population mm-hmm. uh, quite in a big way because you'd actually get girls going up saying, why are you playing that? Why are you playing that? Why mm-hmm. Get yeah. that off. And even managers and but clubs, it, and clubs would go, get that <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because like at the first, at the start of the album, there's like, uh, there's like, th- he's got these things in it called uh, skits and like they're little, it's, it's little parts where like you'll have like somebody talking or someone else talking and literally the first one is called public service announcement, mm-hmm. right? And he literally tells you that this album is bad before yeah. you even listen to it. So, like, it's kind of like, well, what are you expecting? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if if, yeah. if it's already been labelled as that, and if you know that you don't want to hear this album, you're still listening to it. You know, it's kind of like... I think like it's because Eminem did push the boundaries Yeah. in this album. He did, like, when it comes to hip-hop music, like, the only stuff that was sort of widely available to the sort of non-public was the underground scene mm-hmm. and the, uh, so as in the sort of black black hip-hop scene but mm-hmm. yeah he he th- he took it from that out into the mainstream mm-hmm. and i think people weren't kind of ready for that kind of on yeah. onslaught yeah. of from. profanity yeah. um, but he's only speaking the truth mm-hmm. in half of it as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he does dig at people quite a bit yeah oh yeah oh, eminem definitely yeah he he's had a he's had a lot of he rips yeah. limp biscuit quite a bit yeah, <laughs> he's had um, Eminem's had quite a, you know, he's had quite a lot of like run-ins with a lot of people, like um, like certain other celebrities as well. Like, yeah. um, he's he's dissed quite a lot of them on like other albums as well, and you kind of think, whoa, that was a bit. But that's what made know. him famous. Yeah, yeah. If you're like, dishing yeah. you, I'm dishing you. But yeah. you know, that's what happens. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely what happens. I think um, I think I remember like aside from like this album, it was kill shot that i heard where it was um like uh, it was machine gun kelly and he was mm-hmm. talking about like obviously he started bringing up comments about 
his daughter Haley, which is she is also um like mentioned like probably several several times throughout like some of his other albums as well, um and um you know that kind of just didn't really suit well with them both. I don't know like the full feuds behind it, but like it kind of just didn't really go so well, um and then um, like Kill Shot kind of affected Machine Gun Kelly in quite a a strange way. It was like because he kind of like flipped his genres of music after that because he kind of went into more rock music which is fine um because personally um like some machine gun kelly songs that i've listened to are actually quite good and then um, like some of them i wasn't really that into like some of his rap songs are all right but i kind of thought like i didn't really think that it's like you know like trying to this eminem is like trying to shout louder than gordon ramsay yeah you know, but- like <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got. So t- I think to understand Eminem, though, you have to yeah. think of obviously the film Nine Mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because yeah. obviously you know that was made after this album came out. So like when you see the Nine Mile, you know, and obviously the underground scene with rap battles and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that film and then this album totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can see how it, they just come, it merges together. You can see what he's went through. And sort of style of music that he's trying to bring out, because mm-hmm. it wasn't long after that, Fifty Cent started coming out and trying to do the same thing. Yeah, you know, and, it was, and then I was like, okay, well, this we've opened up the door here now. So all that sort of you know hip hop artists started coming out the you know out the woodwork and starting to do the same thing. Mm. So you know, but it yeah. did open up another kind of hip hop scene. Yeah, yeah, on I, the, on the mainstream. I even think like you know, it, before like you even purchase the album, you kind of think the album's going to be controversial, even just looking at the album, because if you look at the album cover. It is a picture of um, somebody in the boot. Somebody in the boot of a car. Mm. Whilst um, they're standing over a pier, which is also referenced in the the ninety seven Bonnie and Clyde film. Mm. Uh, film uh, the the song, sorry, um, which is obviously about um, Eminem's relationship with um, Kim, um, Haley's mum. Um, but uh, yeah, it it, it kind of just fits in so well it's uh, like personally like I, I love the whole album like i think like the way that even the cover of the album it's uh, it's, it's a really good design i like the way that it's like you know like designed and everything i like the colors as it added onto mm-hmm. like the night sky and everything mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. they made they really like the moon in the background it, it's like they've enlarged it as well and it really just suits it yeah you know um so i really like that about it as well i do have one point good point about it yeah so like even as a as a hip hop artist, his lyrical composition and poetry that came through his music, you know, I'll give him props for that because it was very very good, mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he could have could have pulled back a wee bit in the profanity though. Yeah, like some sometimes there are like bits in it where it's just like, you know, like it's like, do we really need like how much like swearing do you need in it like? And then like there are parts in it where like the words do rhyme well when he's not swearing in it. Yeah. Which is like it, it still works well, but like there are there are parts of it where it's just like whew, like you know there's like other clever ways he he goes around like talking about certain subjects without swearing in it mm-hmm. in some songs, which is also like really mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Um. But like it, it doesn't really like bother me that much. I mean, like it's no. I mean, know, I, I kind of yeah. I, I knew what like I was expecting anyway. And plus, mm-hmm. like there's also like on his other songs like um. He's got like a lot of other songs that are like you know like well known as well that mm. that that don't actually have a lot of swearing in them like he, like from other albums like um, without me and um, mm-hmm. uh, was it the was the other one he got the Oscar for again it was that was the one from the film Eight Mile Lose Yourself Lose Yourself yeah well yeah so that that one's also really good as well yeah uh, I I kind of thought it was um. It was kind of strange where when, I don't know if you might not have seen this, but it was when he came back onto the Oscars and he performed at the Oscars. I kind of felt like it was an all right performance, but it was like, it kind of like, like sometimes it felt like the mic was cutting out a bit. That's just a bad sound. And like he, <laughs> but like then again, uh, it showed that like, you know, like he was still continuing on with the song, which is fine. Like yeah. usually most people would go like, oh, what's going on here you know they'd be like you know they probably might end up stop or like something like that but since it was live he kind of had no choice but to just continue until the end um but yeah i mean like throughout the whole album like if i had to rate it from like one to ten i'd probably i'd probably give it an eight because like not every song i like on it 
is like my personal favorite but like you know i i don't think there can ever be an album where i can literally give it a 10 yeah i mean it you know because no album is completely completely has like e- every song's like you know the best no there's all and no matter what like album like you're listening to whether it be like a rap album or a rock album or it, it doesn't matter what type yeah. of genre of music you're listening to there's always going to be songs on it where you know like you kind of think I'm not really a big fan of that song, but then like other people will disagree as well, and they might end up liking those songs more. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. no, definitely, yeah. definitely. But no, uh, yeah, I would give it what for playability in clubs, and it depended on the club. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely up there with like a sort of seven, eight, I would say, um, without a manager. If it wasn't in, you could play it all night, mm. you know. But yeah. Um, but no, I, I, he is a good artist. Um, I think it's that first album, it was, it was a dark album for him because mm-hmm. that's where he was coming from. Mm-hmm. And then obviously when you, you go past it, you know, um, past that one, it starts to open up a wee bit. But he had a real bad habit of um, rubbing people up the wrong way. And y- you can see that sometimes on his mm-hmm. stage and live performances, you know, especially the family life that started pouring into it as well. Yeah, yeah. You know. He got sued a lot as well. A lot. A, a lot, lot of people. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't really go refle- that, well. that That reflected through his music, and that's what ended yeah. up affecting his later stuff as well. And he obviously had that massive, uh, I can't remember how many years he was off the scene. Yeah, I, I think like that's probably why like a lot of people say, like we want you to make like the stuff like what you, you used to make. But like I think like if he did do that sort of stuff, it, he would be like, remember but when he did that, the, all, all, the, like, all that stuff, and then like he did get sued a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, but by that point, like people were re- we would have been ready for it because yeah. like, after like that sh- that scene, you had like the the Def Jam comedy scene that came right out. So people, so like even black comedy, how p- you know people were like relating uh, to that kind of app. You know what, what happens in that in that um, what's the word um, culture mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in a sense. But that was shown through the music. But I think later on, yeah, if you took that gap. And people were asking to rewrite like he would the old days, like a nine mile or whatever. Mm. People, I think, would be more accepting of it. Mm. Definitely. Like, the, like even like if you were comparing like the Slim Shady LP compared to yeah. his most re- recent release, which is uh, "Music to Be Murdered By." Yeah. Some songs are a bit like, woo, but like there's other parts that are like they're not actually so bad. Like the, the songs like are are all right. You know, but it's not the same. I don't think they were as like as more controversial as what the first album was. You know, and I think that's kind of what gave him a lot of recognition. There was a lot of like I, I feel like some parts of the newer ones, they're like it's more about how fast can I put like, music literally out. no, like, it's not like put music out, but like, this is how fast I can rap. So like you, you kind of first got like that first bit when he put out his song in Rap God, you know, that bit where mm-hmm. he rapped really, really fast. And then it kind of continued on throughout some of Kamikaze's um, songs as well. It's like the, the, the flow of that kind of, it, it, it made these songs sound really, really fast, you mm-hmm. know. And then it's like, uh, you had to listen to him a couple of times over to actually hear what he was saying because it went by so fast, you know, because he was saying, like, all mm-hmm. these words so fast. And it's just like, well, like, I'm trying to, like, listen to the whole thing here, eh? But in the thing about the, the first album is that they're not like that there there are some parts where it does slightly rap faster but like it's you have you you know what's going on Mm -hmm. throughout the the stories that he's telling throughout the songs and like he's also got like his personal opinions as well so um yeah but um anyway um that was basically our our uh, our conclusion to the the slim shady lp um would i play it now yes yeah so um, thank you for uh, um, watching, guys. Um, we'll be making more of these videos soon. And um, yeah, Cheers thanks guys. for watching. Bye yeah, bye. Thanks for watching.